Are eye color changing surgeries worth the risk? I'm going to talk about all of those in this video. Keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, eye makeup health, and a little bit about my life here in Hawaii. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and follow along. Today, we're gonna to be talking about eye color changing surgeries and whether or not they're safe. As someone that's always loved experimenting with their look, I like wearing different color contact lenses. I've always just loved that but I'm also an eye surgeon. And I think it's really important to be mindful that these are surgeries, not just procedures. Sometimes they call them procedures. It makes them feel less scary. I think it's really important to know what they're about. And then everybody can make their own educated decision as to whether or not it's right for you. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about three main surgeries, keratopigmentation, iris implant surgery, and then the iris laser. So first, what gives your eye color? The color of your eye is determined by the iris and the amount of melanin you have in the iris. The iris actually sits in the middle of your eye. It doesn't sit on the clear dome-shaped covering the cornea of the eye. So if you're like me and you've done colored contact lenses, you know those colored contact lenses sit on top of the cornea. That's why they kind of look a little bit artificial, especially if the contact lens fit isn't good. And if you see someone with a colored lens and every time they blink, they are moving that contact lens up and down, you see the color moving with it. That is obviously not natural. And part of the reason it looks so bad is because it's on the anterior part. It's on the front part of the eye, which is not where eye color usually is. My husband's a corneal surgeon, but he does not do this kind of surgery and you will soon learn why. So what exactly are they doing? This is basically like a tattoo of your cornea. So unlike a cosmetic colored contact lens, which sits on top of your cornea, they are tattooing one of the inner layers of the cornea, but it is still one of the front parts of your eye. It's not exactly where the iris is, which is what has the eye color. So it does look a little bit artificial, but through this tattooing process, it is able to change the color of your eyes. So this is how the surgery is done step by step. First, what the surgeon does is he's going to create a pocket. They use a femtosecond laser. This is the kind of surgery that we also use for cataract surgery. And it makes a small pocket in the stroma, which is the middle layer of the cornea. And this pocket acts like a little tunnel. And that is where the pigment is going to be injected. The laser used here is very precise and it's designed to minimize damage to the surrounding tissues, which is why we also use it in cataract surgery. But the eye is extremely delicate and even little small errors can lead to problems down the road. That's why I said, this is a surgery. It's the same thing we do with cataract surgery, or at least this first step. Then the pigment is injected. So once the pocket's created, the colored pigment is injected into the cornea. So it's similar to tattoo ink but the pigment stays in the cornea and then it changes the appearance of the eye color without really changing the iris itself. So this is permanent and it's on the surface of the eye, in the middle part of the surface of the eye. It might seem like it's a really quick and easy fix, but there are downsides, mainly the healing and the results. So after the procedure, the cornea does heal really well within the next few weeks because it's a very small little opening that they made and the procedure itself, the surgery is really pretty quick and it's minimally invasive. But anytime you manipulate the cornea, you're going to run into the risk of complications. So what can happen with keratopigmentation? Corneal scarring. So if the laser or pigment injection causes a lot of damage, it can lead to scarring. And a scar on the surface of your eye can reduce your vision and cause irregularities in the cornea. And that's gonna lead to distorted vision. The pigment itself is not supposed to affect your vision. Infection is also possible. So like with any surgery, there's always the risk of infection. That can lead to really serious vision problems, even blindness. And that's something that people don't really think about. And then opacification, the pigment can migrate. It can cause cloudy areas in the cornea and that can interfere with light. And that's going to lead to decreased visual clarity. So you're not going to see that on a lot of websites for people advertising that they do this procedure. While the surgery can give you a different eye color, it does come with risks. They are doing something kind of similar to LASIK in a way. So you have to be mindful that it's not just an injection. It is going to have the potential of affecting your vision. Next, I wanna talk about iris implant surgery. So this procedure was actually designed initially for patients with medical conditions. 
One of them is called aniridia. So that's when people are born or either because of trauma or they're congenital, they don't have an iris. So that makes people very, very light sensitive. But now this is being marketed as a cosmetic procedure because it can change eye color. For other individuals, it would help them decrease their light sensitivity because it gave some pigment where they didn't have it. This is how the iris implant surgery works and it's really pretty much the same as the way it's always worked even in patients that need it for medical issues. So during the iris implant surgery, a flexible artificial iris, it's made of silicone, is inserted through into the eye through a very, very small incision in the cornea. Again, making an incision in the dome-shaped covering of the eye. And then the implant actually sits in front of the natural iris. And that's what gives the supposed change of color. Your actual eye color has not changed. Then what the surgeon has to do is position the implant. So they place the implant over the iris. They make sure it fits really snugly. And then they can adjust the implant to match the size of your natural iris. This is designed to be permanent unless complications arise, in which case you actually can remove this iris implant. You can't remove the keratopigmentation, but you can remove the iris implant if there's problems. So what kind of problems? Glaucoma. That's one of the most common complications of this procedure. Glaucoma is high pressure in the eye, which causes damage to the optic nerve and eventual blindness. So the implant can interfere with the fluid drainage devices of the eye, and that can cause an increase in pressure. If it's not treated, this can actually lead to permanent vision loss and blindness. This can also cause cataracts because the iris implant rubs against the natural structures of the eye and it causes damage to the lens and that leads to cataracts. So that might then require a cataract surgery to fix that. Anytime you insert something in the eye that's not supposed to be there, you can get chronic inflammation. So that's usually what happens with foreign bodies in the eye. So that implant might trigger long-standing inflammation that's going to possibly lead to pain, redness, and potentially, again, permanent vision loss. Now, retinal detachments are really pretty rare. That's when the whole retina separates from the inside of the eye, but it is a possibility with this kind of procedure because anytime you do any kind of surgery within the eye, a retinal detachment is a possibility. This surgery, I think, is worth it for people who need it for medical reasons, might not be so much for just changing your eye color. And then the third surgery is a stromal procedure. It's a laser eye color changing surgery. Some people will get this. These are advertised a lot in New York and in California. You'll see all over their websites that they're changing brown eyes to blue or to gray. And what they do is they're using the laser to remove the top layer of the melanin, which is the pigment of the iris. So you target the stroma by using this low energy laser and it's specifically calibrated to target and disrupt the melanin. That's what obviously gives your eyes their, their brown color. I'm assuming you have brown eyes if you're going for this procedure. Over time, as the pigment cells break down, the blue color underneath becomes visible. So that's why you see it more gradually, unlike the first two surgeries. So that gradual change is really characteristic of this laser. You don't get that eye color change immediately. It does take a few weeks or even a few months for the melanin to fully disperse, or for the blue or green color to become visible. So this gradual change might be appealing to some people because it's less invasive at first glance, but not necessarily. So what are the complications of this laser? Laser seems as if it's less risky than any kind of surgery, right? Well, you can get increased light sensitivity because you're removing the melanin, the pigment of your iris. You're gonna make your eye more sensitive to light. Might not seem like a big deal, but that can really be horribly uncomfortable, especially in bright environments like here where I live in Hawaii. And it's going to lead to a lot of problems with long-term glare and contrast sensitivity. Once again, glaucoma is another complication. Like in the iris implants, the laser procedure can affect the eye's drainage system. So that can lead to an increased risk of glaucoma. This is primarily due to the fact that the pigment particles that are getting released by the laser can possibly block up the trabecular meshwork. Now, some surgeons will say that doesn't happen. Some of the reports haven't shown that so much, but it is a possibility. And then inflammation and infection. Disrupting the natural pigmentation of the eye can trigger inflammation, which can cause pain and swelling, and in some cases, a very serious eye infection. And then last, you don't get a guaranteed result. So when you do the iris implant surgery or the corneal tattooing, you get the color you exactly want. But with this, you don't really have as much control 
factors like your genetics or your underlying eye structure, the amount of melanin you have might give you a final eye color that's not exactly what you expected. So there's no way, unfortunately, with the laser to reverse the procedure if you're unhappy with the results. So it might seem as if it's really quick and easy to use a laser as opposed to real eye surgery uh, to remove the eye pigment, but it does also have risks that may outweigh the benefits when you really stop and think about it. The American Academy of Ophthalmology, the American Academy of Ophthalmology really does not recommend any of these three eye color changing procedures for cosmetic reason. Again, the iris implant surgery has been around for medical reasons, but they don't recommend it for changing the eye color. In fact, they recommend, like I do, colored contact lenses. I know they're not going to give you the same look. They're not permanent. Maybe you don't like wearing colored contacts. Maybe you want something that doesn't give you uh, that slight artificiality, but they are going to be the safest for your eyes. So that's a breakdown of the different eye color procedures. If you've had one, I'm really interested to know what your surgery was like, if you were happy with your eye color. Once again, everybody makes their own decisions. I want you all to just know the possible risks, what the procedures are like, what the surgeries are like, and then you come to the decision that is best for you and your eyes. But love to hear a comment below if you've had one of these procedures done, if you've had one of these surgeries done, and if you are happy with your results. If you found this video helpful, or if you know someone considering one of these surgeries, share this video with them. And if you have any other ideas for topics for future YouTube videos, drop them in the comments below as well. I read every single comment. And I'm happy to make videos that speak to your need. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.